Let's cop around here. You guys know that I don't know what I'm doing, right? When it comes to building, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing it for like 18 years. There's always room for improvement, but I know how to build. But when it comes to videos, I started when this channel started. I taught myself how to film, I taught myself how to edit, and I've been filming and editing every exciting episode since. Now, it's times like now that I have to remind myself of this. And that's because in this exciting episode, we're having a glass company called Viridian coming around to our house and showing me and showing you how to double glaze a window. And then they're gonna supply glass for our entire house for free. And they're doing that because of videos that I taught myself how to make four years ago about my building career that I've been doing for 18 years. How crazy is that? And just like that, our bedroom looks like a construction site. Top of the South Island. These are the windows. Gate building going to be one of your projects there, Scott? Well, what's wrong with that gate? <laughs> oh, well, hi there, Tim. How are you? Welcome to the show. Let's uh, <laughs> just get the sledgehammer in and start breaking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. So, this is the first window we're doing this timber window here, and it's your classic 1960s split thingy timber window. And the glass is about four mil thick. Three mil? Three mil thick. Yeah. Oh my god, even worse than I thought. Even worse. Actually makes no difference to the thermal performance, but... Doesn't it? No, glass thickness has gotten up. No beer in the water. Huh. Interestingly enough. To make higher performance, you've got to isolate the back piece of glass from a front piece of glass. And you can make it a whole bunch more thermally efficient if you use a, an air, a gas that's denser than air and put low E high performance coatings on the glass as well which basically act like glad no not glad wrap what's the word uh, tin foil <laughs> tin foil that's right one. how did you find the channel because you were the first one to reach out to me from viridian actually um funny story a mate at best mate of mine in auckland who um, was in the building construction industry who i used to fly with at air new zealand um, when i moved down here he's been following your channel and then you said you were looking for an architect and i just started at viridian and he said oh you must be dealing with architects you need to reach out and touch base with these guys mm. that's how it came about I can't believe the glass hasn't broken yet. Yeah. <laughs> Got hinges on it. It's actually meant to open. <laughs> Holy heck! Yeah, they, they've nailed it. They've nailed oh, it. that they've is nailed classic. A, nailed a sh on. So that's a hinge. That's actually the hinge. Why would they do that? <laughs> Stop the kids climbing out, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you can see they've actually they've bogged it up here too. Yeah, until yeah. yeah, so you pull things apart, you, you don't know what's going to be there. So next up we've got to clean up these old windows. They've probably got like 60 years of paint on them. And now that we actually have four opening windows rather than the two that I thought we had, we've also got filler and everything to scrape off the face of these bottom ones. So that we chase it out oh, I see. In, on the inside. 
So we're going to be coming in through there, but I've just got my mark on here so I can adjust this back. How long have you had that Makita router for? Uh, not, not that long because I actually blew my other one up. I had a battery pad one. Yep. Um, the Makita as well? It was actually a Ryobi one. It was a fantastic little thing, but yeah, you're trimming through Remu and it just... <laughs> something broke inside it and it was rattling, so... <laughs> thought we'd better throw that out. Fair enough. You got, yeah, you've got quite a lot of Ryobi tools. Yeah, just home handyman stuff. That's not, not what work would be using. Right, okay. But, um, so it's just from your garage? Yeah, it's just from my garage, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to get our double glazed unit. So you've got two pieces of glass. One of them is our light bridge uh, low E coated glass on the inside panel. There's a thermal spacer bar which holds the two pieces of glass apart with a seal around it called butyl. And then on the outside there's a polysulfide um, sealant that goes as your secondary seal. This one's only got a 10 millimeter thermal spacer on it because we, we can't go too thick on a timber window and then another four millimeter piece of glass on it and, and this has got argon gas inside it as well that was going to be my next question yeah that's denser than denser than air so it slows the um, thermal transfer rate down you can actually you might not be able to see but you can actually see it looks slightly different when you look through the through the glass and that's that's your low e coating which is um, a really a super thin metal coating for in layman's terms <coughs> yeah um, that deflects the heat back inside Let's try this one. Here's where you hope that you measured it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that happen from time to time? Yep. <laughs> it's the 100 mil trick. Oh no. You make things 100 mils too big or too small. If there was any mystery, I guess we definitely have cedar. Yeah, <laughs> smells amazing. Yeah, it really does. Frame. <laughs> Does it help that it's cedar, a nice kind of soft workable oh, wood? Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. The dry fit before Scott paints or before Greg paints, <laughs> rebates. Greg said he was born to paint, right? Yeah, I did. And then that. Yeah. Leaves us with a one millimeter gap, uh, one millimeter rise through there. Oh, yep. So that's like sticking want, out. Yeah, we want it to be proud. Is that like a drip edge, effectively? Yeah. Yep. Cool. That looks good. All right. Anyone watching out there, Scott needs some new paint brushes. Because <laughs> these, are not, what, what these are not good. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with that? I don't understand. Look at that! Where are you going, Greg? Bunnings. Why? To get Scott a paintbrush. <laughs> It's that dire, is that it? That one's not good. Excellent. <laughs> Alright. How long have you been a builder, Scott? I've uh, been a builder since 2004. Yep. Yeah. What about you, Tim? How long have you been working with windows? Uh, I did my apprenticeship when I was 18, I think I started. 17 or 18, and then I worked in the South Island for five years. Um, and I worked in the UK for a few years glazing. Yep. Um, and then I 
I did hardwood flooring in Canada for a couple of years. Oh, really? Um, that was a bit different. <sighs> yeah, a bit. And then, yeah, I moved back to, I moved to Nelson in 2009. And I started working for uh, what would be Viridian Glass back then, or it is now. Wow, so you guys, you guys, you've been working for them for quite a while. Yeah, I've been here for 13 years. So I started off on the tools there, and then I become the estimator for a while, and uh, South Island technical rep. And I last year took on the role of the branch manager for Nelson. It's quite a good team of guys down there. We, we employ about 50 guys in Nelson. Oh wow. Guys and girls, not just guys. It's quite a big team. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got a production company, a production um, a factory that will make double glaze units and shower panels and mirrors and everything yeah. else. And then we've got an installations team as well. That do the installation. Nice. Hence the term installations team. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny, but. <laughs> He's back. He's back. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> Jess is back. And some lunch as well. Ooh. Ooh. Thanks, Jess. How good is it? Some little. Not bad, eh? That project, as in. Well, you can get all artsy with it and create a little diagram. You could paint them, put flowers on them. You have way more faith in me than I do. So you managed to pop them out intact. That's impressive. Yeah. So it's all right. right. So you're doing the tape. Okay. So we're going to put a foam tape in the back um, to cushion the glass, and it's black, so it looks nice. And it just runs in here. Worst job when I was an apprentice was putting this tape on because yeah. it would just be this. You look at it later, and it was just wobbly, <laughs> just wobbly. Then <isn't> it. <laughs> They'd show you how to do it about ten times, and then you'd finally get it, and then then it was easy after that. So you run your finger along the side, I see. Yeah, and it just guides it. Take off. Sucker off. So you start with the bottom beater? Yeah, I do the bottom and the top and then you can swap the sides in nice and easily. So I'll do a square cut on the on the bottom. So the then. water can come and drip off. There you go. That's the nerve wracking part. Yep. All sorts of weird stuff on these windows. Obviously they had some sort of tape seal at some point. I'm not going to do the sealants today, it's just the double glazing. So in the future I might adjust the hinges to allow for a rubber seal that goes all the way around. And now that we have bottom windows that open, which I didn't know, I'll need to get some for that too. So, always pays to rip things apart first, figure out what's going on. So I've scraped off all the old paint, well not all, but a lot of the old paint and filler that was here. And me and Jess 
have been going back and forth trying to decide whether we keep these bottom windows open or do what they did and screw them shut. It's Jess and I. <laughs> <laughs> And what do you what do you reckon Jess? You're buying the camera, what, what do you think? Nailing the window shut like it was or opening it because there's a hinge and everything there already ready to go? What I do you reckon? I decided to keep the bottom yeah, closed. pretty much. I can't really see any added benefit to be able to open them both. Tim, the window guy, pointed out that this is also head height, right? So if you have this bottom one open and you just walk past while you're focusing on the garden and boom, smack your head. So That's the kind of thing I'd do as well. That's another good reason and also it's just another window that I'm going to have to try and seal. I can already see that being a bit tricky with these awning style windows. So this is all going to be done in the future, not now. now. Don't judge my painting job by the way. I know this isn't very good. Okay, hey, don't zoom in. What are you doing? Yeah, so the, the coatings that, that they put on the glass um, has existed for quite some time. It's gotten better over the years, so it's clearer than it used to be and more effective. New Zealand we didn't actually have to double glaze our homes until I think 2006 was when the law changed. Seriously? Yeah. Um, but obviously in Europe they've been doing it for probably 20 years before that. Yeah. And now with the new Sorry. H1 coming in yeah. in November, Lowy will be the minimum. <coughs> yeah, Explain to me again what Lowy is. It's called low E, which means low emissivity. It's basically, it reduces the amount of heat that is lost through your glass, on specifically this one. Mm. Um, light bridge will uh, make your thermal performance or your U value a whole bunch better. So the low E coating is actually a metal coatings that have been sprayed on the surface of the glass. I guess you call it a nano coating because it's super thin, you can't see it. On the inside or the outside? Uh, it's on, you can't touch it, so it's, <laughs> it's on, no, you, you can touch it. <laughs> It's, it's on this piece of glass, but it's inside the double glazed unit, so you can't physically touch it. Right, okay. Because you can actually damage it with your fingers. Mm -hmm. on the um, do you guys want to have lunch before you crack onto the fourth one? Yeah. I can feel the raindrops. We're just about to put the last glass in the last window sash. These are cedar window sashes, so I'm going to be grabbing cedar, I think, uh, for building some of the new casements that I want to build. It's so orange in there. Oh, hi, Jess. Oh, hi. Hey. Oh, Guru. Mm. Hey. Guru. I know. Yeah. I've been Guru's years, but here's for a long time. <laughs> uh, you're a fan, are you? Yeah. This bit of primer that I put on the window frame is going to need to be dried because those windows are just about ready to pop in place. It's pretty dry already. I've got to be in the inside anyway. So yeah. Yeah. So you almost just hand this through. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're going to have to hold it. What does that say? Bottom right. John, that light. Yep, the hardware's in good condition. Awesome. That's um, what we like to hear. Fine. One on that side, I mean. Yep. Oh, shivers. Yeah, it, it really goes for Woo. a while, Talky. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's, it's rubbing at the bottom. Yep, that's fine. It won't matter, will it? Because no. we don't screw it shut. Yeah. Cool. Look at that. It's so much quieter in here. <laughs> Feels better already. So Tim was saying before that you have to be careful what sealant you use between the bead and the glass because different sealants can react with the... What do you call the stuff that seals the glass? Uh, the polysulfide. 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 Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't want a sealant that will eat away at the polysulfide over time. Um, Jess, do you mind grabbing the multi -tool? Thanks. Run it along facing the glass? Yeah, touch the glass. Just touch the glass. He's got. Yo. 
Oh, thanks. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man, thanks, Jess. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel like you made that look easy, Tim. <laughs> oh, I thought I made it look quite hard, but <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to see your uh, your your got your attempt there, Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it won't be as refined. Just say it's that. very time. Con it's just yeah. very time consuming. So I'd just yeah. say. You know, just take your time. Don't yeah, I'm not going to rush any, it. Any of it. I'm going to time myself just out of interest, but I'm not going to try and beat the clock. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, team. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for the paintbrush. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. Appreciate it. No you did a great job. It'll make your house warmer and more comfortable. Absolutely. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. So I've got to put the stays back. Well, the stays are on. I've got to put the latches back on, but look at that. All right, just so... I don't know that I can reach. <laughs> yeah? Um, talk continuously. Talk continuously. Well, that yeah. should be easy for me. You can normally get me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> <Time. laughs> yeah, somewhat. Yeah. It makes a difference. We don't have insulation in these walls. We don't have rubber seals around these windows and all we have is jib, timber weatherboards, that's it. That's like the whole wall. And that's what we're about to change in this room. We're going to rip this whole room apart, probably in the next exciting episode. Scotty, can I come inside now? <laughs> no. <laughs> right, so this is the office window this morning. You can see a bit of condensation there. And then here, in the bedroom, where we double glazed it yesterday, no condensation. Now then. And that's without it being sealed or anything. So, so far, so good.